We are so pleased to be here, and it is so wonderful that the Global Child Forum is taking place in South America at such an auspicious moment when, as we have been reminded by uh, the King of Sweden, the implementation of the Sustainable Development Agenda is gaining traction. As you know, this is a very ambitious agenda. It wants to eradicate poverty. Just think about that. It is ambitious because for the first time, rather than focusing on countries who are in the developing world, it reminds us all that the challenges to create a prosperous society, inclusive and just for all, is in fact a challenge that each and every nation faces. And certainly economies in Europe, such as my own, who have been facing austerity measures know how this has an impact on families and on children. But it is also very ambitious because this agenda is calling on all of us, the international community, to invest in each and every child and to create a world that is free from fear and from violence. And violence is, in fact, a corrosive factor in every society of the world. And violence affecting children remains incredibly invisible and pervasive but we can address it and overcome it. Now, this agenda is also very smart because it reminds us that one of the biggest lessons from the Millennium Development Goals is that countries who were affected by violence were lagging behind. They had higher under five mortality rates, under, num under children affected by malnutrition were particularly represented in statistical information. In those countries, there were more children out of school, and certainly there was less hope for families affected by deprivation. And one of the reasons this was happening was because violence was not considered as deserving a distinct attention and investment in prevention was not factor. For instance, as we have just heard, by investing in early childhood development to bring all children to the best start in life and to be feeling part of society to which they belong. But now we can change this. In the development agenda, we have not only a clear call for all countries to prevent and eradicate violence against children by 2030, but we have a very clear indicator which will help us to measure how well we are doing. You may know that every five minutes there is a child who dies as a result of violence. Last year, a billion children, that is half of every child in the world, has been affected by violence, and this happens in all countries. This has a huge cost for society. Every year, violence against children costs 8% of global GDP. This is something that certainly businesses would like to consider, but we can invest in making it something completely different. Now, Latin America has so much to celebrate. Certainly, such important national agendas to prevent and address violence against children in so many countries in the region. Such important legislation as the one the president signed this morning, but very much inspired by the example of Sweden, legislation that prohibits all forms of violence against children, adopted in countries such as Peru, Chile, Argentina, and my list could go on for long. But we have many challenges, as we have heard. This region is often known as the most unequal region in the world and the most violent region in the world. In fact, we still have 70 million children growing up in poverty, 5 million children affected by child labor, a million girls sexually abused, such high rates of early pregnancy, child marriage, one in four girls in Latin America gets married very early and becomes mother very early. But we know this is not a fate. And in fact, with strong partnerships, we can change this. And that's why the partnership with the corporate sector is so fundamental. And this is also recognized in the Sustainable Development Agenda has uh, His Royal Highness uh, the King of Sweden reminded us at the beginning, investing a business can be an engine of social prosperity. And in fact, if we invest in children, they develop better, 
but at the same time, society prospers and business flourishes. So we all have to gain. So what can we do and what can business help us do? First of all, certainly include these goals, preventing violence and addressing children's rights in the codes of ethics, in the procedures, in the practices, in the procurement policies of each and every um, business. Training the staff and the providers about the relevance of children. We are converted, but so many people just, uh, just misses the point of how important this is. We can create certainly family-friendly policies within businesses, work in places that are child-friendly, welcoming children. We can invest in education, as we have heard and in early childhood, to ensure that child labor is not a risk for kids. And we can raise the awareness of children. Let me just mention one example. The risks associated with information and communication technologies, accessing the internet, using a mobile phone, and being groomed, and being harassed, and being seduced to be involved in the practice of criminal activities are risks that children and face every day in this region and in other parts of the world. And of course, businesses can help us leverage their voice and their influence to bring many others around the same table and the same agenda. For instance, supporting more legal reforms, more policy reforms to invest in early uh, childhood development, including inclusive societies and uh, prosperity nations. And this means we need to join hands, all of us. We like to say in our work that if we join hands with all of us, in fact, we can achieve something that is really beautiful. The sum of our forces can become zero, zero tolerance to violence and zero perfection in protecting children's rights. And I believe you can help us all make zero the best and the most favorite number for the whole world. Thank you so much.